down. Well, if you like billet blocks, I think you should hang around and watch this episode. Oh, oh, what's in the box, Donnie? What's in the box? Uh, just some old wonder, let's have a look, let's have a look. What have we got? That we're finally going to be back in action for you guys after five months having a bit of a break because we were waiting on a, a nice shiny Ooh. billet block. Oh, let the party begin. Oh, Dan's made the removable subframe so we can change bearings, remove the sump with the engine still in the car. Good job, mate, good job. So the first thing we do when we get a billet block is destroy it, start drilling holes in it, give us places for engine mounts to bolt onto. Have to have Darren on about that. He should have put some spots in for us rear wheel drive guys. So we've had old Donnie on the die grinder for the last few hours. He's tidied up all the bottom of the bores for clearance for the aluminium rods. He's also deburred the block. Uh, we've just pulled the main studs out. Now we'll take it outside and give it a bit of a wash. Oh, we're all nice and shiny. It's just like doing the dishes at home, which I never do actually. But let's um, bang some bearings in it. We'll start with the standard bearings. So we're aiming for about one and a half hour, just over. Ready to bang the top on, or the bottom on, I should say, and we'll measure up the clearances. As we go, we might let you in on some of the secrets these guys have done on the blocks and a couple of secrets they haven't actually got on their website that's probably going to um, benefit a lot of UK series guys. First one, it has four bolt mains. What are we doing running a stock crank? We've got all the other gear, Donnie, but we're throwing a stock crank back in this Honda. So the block we've gone for is what's known as a dry deck. So it still has water around all the cylinders, which is through here. Uh, water travels through here around the front and behind another plate here um, and then travels around through that plate as well. So these plates screw on, they come with O-rings to do that. Um, so the O-ring just comes as a big long length and you just cut it down and glue the two ends together. I'm also going to put a bit of three bond on it to make sure they don't ever ever leak. Righto, time to get some rings again. So luckily all piston manufacturers or ring manufacturers usually give you a bit of a chart. Um, we're on this one, high boost 30 pound plus, bore size which is 3.425 inches times 0 0.009 and that gives us 30 thou for the top and the second ring. So, so our second ring starts at 15 thou, so that is how it comes out of the packet, we've got to increase that to 30. Oh, we're only tricking. So these are the new piston pins. See how heavy duty they are, even compared to this one from Remy, which was also quite a heavy duty one. So they're just getting more serious as the horsepower goes up. We found our first little thing that would um, trick a few young players. The threads in the block aren't actually long enough. Uh, we're gonna have to drill that and tap them a bit deeper. Plenty of meat behind it. There's no reason why they're not actually tapped a bit further. Oh, that's better. Now we run this timing chain tensioner because we noticed big wear on the OEM stuff. Everything you read, guys, say the OEM stuff is quite a good unit. Uh, we're not running massive camshafts, but at the same time, we were seeing a lot of wear in the OEM one, and mainly because they only have this single ratcheting system here, where on this unit, you've got one below as well, so that all helps. Oh, it's good to see we're making use of the table Dan built for the back of the car anyway. You can have a picnic, you can put your beers on it. Perfect little table. Every car should have a table on the back. Oh, one more to go. Well, that's the short end all done. Let's see if we can bolt it head on. Now, this is going to be the best part about this whole engine. Fire rings and a copper head gasket. So that gets us away from blowing head gaskets all the time. So the system here they use on two, 3,000 horsepower cars, they seem to um, work really well. So hopefully no more head gaskets, but the problem now is if we do something wrong or something bad happens, it's still gonna find somewhere to um, let us know about it. So the beauty we have, even if combustion gases do get past this ring, there's no water galleries here for it, um, for them gases to go into so we're not hopefully going to have any coolant pressure issues definitely not from this so the bottom of the head that's also been welded up i don't know if we've showed you guys this this was done end of last year 
So all the holes have been welded up and then that's all been remachined and valves recut. So same thing, no gases can find their way into the cooling system through the head gasket. I spent the last hour filing out this copper head gasket to make it all fit all the holes and all the dowels nicely. Donnie's over here masking everything up, ready to drill the half, the 13 mil holes through for the head studs. So something that bullet engineering don't uh, let everyone know about is the fact that these things run, or you, they do have the provision still for stock oil pump. So that was the biggest thing that probably put us off going billet. But this makes it so simple, all the OEM Honda pump goes on because they are a great unit, they're good for what we're doing. Obviously you can't beat a dry sump, I'm not gonna um, argue there. But for drag racing and a little bit of street stuff, this seems to be all right with our oil pressure. So, Biggest thing with it, I've just had to drill and tap these holes just a little bit further. They won't tap the whole way down. I've had to shorten the OEM bolts only by a few mil each bolt to make them reusable. But apart from that, all the provisions are there for the guide and obviously the tension is built into the pump. So next thing we'll get onto the windage tray, we'll open up some holes on that to clear the four bolt mains and see if we can get that to fit too and clear all these aluminium rods. And with a little bit of clearancing, um, it clears all the studs pretty well. So obviously we've just had to take a bit of material out around here We've still got our three mil spaces underneath it to clear the rod How good is it that you can throw all that stuff into a block that can handle a couple of thousand horsepower? Now I've got to jump in and remind you guys without the help of all these guys We wouldn't be building this motor also Kapalki kick cars. There's a few other guys that aren't on the back window that have um, helped as we go. So without the support from them, we'd still be sitting with our stock block, that's for sure. It's something we keep having an issue with, I don't know if any of you other guys are, um, these keyways for some reason are the drag cartel ones that have the crank machine to take that as well. It's down to the back of the crank and also to the keyway via, uh, to the crankshaft via this keyway. So for some reason we keep being able to twist that. Don't know what's going on there. The balance is always tight, so something's moving. Now don't let the trigger wheel catches out. I always see it on all the Facebook pages. It says outside, make sure that's facing the outside of the engine. We were just checking the main oil feed into the head, which is through this hole, and notice that we can tidy up that copper gasket to help that flow. But at the same time, we noticed something else. Now this is the bad part, that's the oil feed into the head. So that usually lines up on all the MLS gaskets fine, so it just means that gallery's off slightly in the block. So what we can do is do a bit of a lead in on the head to help that flow. So that shows where the MLS gasket sits over that oil feed. Oh, that should make it fly a bit better. Is it gonna make 1500 horsepower, Donnie? Yes, it will. That's the attitude. Have right, yeah, the, ne the next, the next, the next part of the puzzle, or the next upgrade, we've got these four piston chain guides. So they reckon they're meant to be better. We'll believe them, we'll throw them in and try them out. So we never actually redialed these cams in when we went to the four piston heads. So we've obviously always do it when you're building a motor, now it's out on the ground. And to be honest, they're all smack on. So what we've done, it looks a little bit rough, it's quite hard to get in to do, is a little deflector plate there which is gonna hopefully stop water trying to come straight through from this side of the head and come take the easiest path back to the radar. Hopefully it's gonna make that water go around all the combustion chambers and then circulate and come all the way back through before it comes out to the top of the radiator. Now we've also taken the stock little heater pipe fitting out of here because we're gonna be feeding water now out of the block up into the head separately because no water can pass through the head gasket. So we've changed that to a dash 10. So that gives us this big unit here, which will um, hopefully be enough flow for what we're trying to do. Well, that's getting pretty close now to putting the covers on it, front timing cover, rocket cover, and then it's gonna be ready for a sump that Dan's modifying once again for us. So we're getting pretty close. We'll bang these next few bits on, might even throw the intake manifold on just to see how it all looks, just cause I'm starting to get really excited. How good's this? We've got four injectors under the manifold and we've got eight on top. They're for methanol, they're for unleaded. We've got a massive turbo. We're ready for 60 pounds of boost. Well, I never thought I'd get to see this day. This is some pretty exciting stuff. Man, I cannot wait to get this in. The next step, Dan's doing the sump. 
then we'll be sending it, oh, we'll be putting it in the car, making some new mounts. We're moving the motor forward, 60 mil motor and box, 60 mil, try and put some weight over the front wheels. Keep the front down, hopefully get this thing to 60, that little bit harder, and then let's try and go 750 this year, eh? Another upgrade we've got happening um, is two Alexa pumps. So two Alexa 1380 fuel pumps. I'll post a picture of them there. Um, awesome guy to deal with. He gets these units out, sends them all over the world on some big name cars. Some cars making massive power too. So real good units. Keeps you away from having to run all the mechanical pumps if you don't want to go down that path. So we'll talk a little bit more about the dry deck stuff. So obviously head gaskets were our... Um, Nemesis all last year anytime we'd put 38 pound in it. We were fine anything over that we've started seeing big coolant pressure increases So we've got to get away from that. So that's why we've done the whole dry deck thing So everyone goes oh you can't drive that on the street now um, But you can so, so water comes in the block through here. It travels around the block down the other side of the engine out the back and then up into the head here Hits the deflector plate we showed you earlier. Travels around here. Pops out the top. And goes back to the radiator. So still full water. So there's water in the head, water in the block at all times. Um, the best thing is there's just nothing, no water in between the head and the block to cause any issues at all. Over and out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for all the likes. Thanks for all the comments. Make sure you subscribe. Let's get this thing back to the track. Well, that was interesting. Break it down.